is AM Agenda. Good morning and welcome to AM Agenda. I'm David Lipson. On the program today, why the church has been given the green light to discriminate in the workplace for its schools and hospitals. We'll speak to the Australian Christian Lobby's Jim Wallace a little bit later in the program. But first, with the Aussie dollar remaining stubbornly high and increasing competition from Asian car makers, Australia's car producers are gearing up for possibly more government handouts, or at least the request for more government handouts. That's who we're going to start our discussion this morning with Labor MP Kelvin Thompson and Shadow Parliamentary Secretary Jamie Briggs. Good morning to both of you, gentlemen. Uh, good First morning, uh, to you, morning, Kelvin Jamie. Thompson. General, General Motors got last year a $275 million promise uh, from the government. Now they're considering a request for more money to help with the investment in a V6 engine plant in Port Melbourne. Should they get such assistance if asked? Well, David, we haven't seen any detail about whether such a request uh, will be made and the nature of the request and uh, what that would entail. But in principle, uh, I am strongly supportive of government co-investment with automotive manufacturers in Australia. Uh, the, the $200 million you referred to earlier generated something like a billion dollars in co-investment from General Motors and something like $4 billion of economic activity. And the truth is if we're not prepared to engage with the automotive industry and be supportive of it, we won't have an automotive manufacturing industry in Australia and that will be a bad thing. Uh, manufacturing jobs are really important. They provide uh, good quality jobs in the middle of our society and they bring with it expertise and skills in research and development engineering. Those jobs are worth fighting for and there is a very clear di difference and distinction between the government and the opposition in this matter. Jamie Briggs, there's still been uh, big job losses in Victoria in the car industry in the past 12 months or so. Is this value for money from the government? Well, Calvin's got a nice set of words there uh, that he, he rolls out that the government's committed to all this apparently, that you know they believe in manufacturing jobs and ensuring manufacturing survives in Australia and yet they put on uh, a carbon tax which is singularly uh, going about assisting the destruction of the manufacturing industry in Australia and the quickest way uh, to give the car industry or uh, any manufacturing industry some relief in this country is to remove the reverse tariff that has no environmental benefit uh, but just makes uh, manufacturing products in Australia more expensive. The car industry for instance is paying uh, some 80 million dollars worth of carbon tax. Um, now take that pressure off them uh, and all of a sudden you've got, uh, you'll, you'll give them much more of an opportunity to compete. Now, uh, you know, Kelvin and the Labor Party will run around and say that they believe in uh, manufacturing but at the same time they go about putting on these unnecessary taxes. Uh, they go about putting on uh, a mining tax on the mining industry, our most successful industry, which of course uh, we know today again is receiving no revenue. Uh, it's actually costing the government uh, money. Uh, it's another broken promise uh, from uh, the government, uh, a carbon tax that wouldn't exist in the first place uh, had well, the Prime well, Minister kept it. Well, let's just stay on the mining tax for a moment. Uh, I want to ask you both about this uh, apparent advice that uh, the Treasury and the government has received from the tax office and from lawyers about the mining tax revenue. The government hasn't released how much revenue has been received from the mining tax. We know that no money was received in the first quarter, but there are suspicions that perhaps no money will be received in the second quarter. Uh, the, the claim being that uh, it would be illegal uh, to, uh, to release this information because it would breach secrecy of, of companies but Kelvin Thompson uh, I can understand that for individual companies but why not release the total amount that the mining tax may reap from all the companies that wouldn't breach any secret secrecy provisions would it? Well the government's acting on legal advice from the tax office and from the Australian government solicitor David and if we were to act differently if we were to release advice which disclosed the affairs of particular mining companies, uh, the opposition would be the first people out of the blocks to say that this is a disgraceful way to treat mining companies, that it's an invasion of their privacy and they'd be calling for people to be sacked. So 
And what the government is doing here is the correct thing, which is to act on legal advice. And if that legal advice is that taxpayer confidentiality needs to be protected, uh, then we will act in that way. And if the opposition is saying that uh, they don't care about taxpayer privacy and confidentiality in relation to these matters, well, that's a very interesting debate and let's have it. Jamie Briggs, do you accept the advice from these lawyers? Well, um, if that's the case, Kelvin, why did the Prime Minister write to Bob Brown uh, promising to release mo monthly updates? The, the point I mean, if this here is the case, is the, the Prime the... Minister's breaking the law, is she? I mean, you know, what, no, what that, utter hypocrisy from this government. You had the petroleum uh, rent uh, tax, which they released figures on. Uh, this is just another broken promise. This is exactly the same as the Prime Minister saying she wouldn't challenge Kevin Rudd and then went about knifing him. Uh, she said she wouldn't have a carbon tax under a government she led, then implemented a carbon tax. She said over 200 times there'd be a surplus. Now there won't be a surplus. She promised Bob Brown and the Senate that there would be monthly release of figures in relation to the MR. RT, and now we know there won't be because they're embarrassed. They're embarrassed no, they've the, implemented the, a tax that has no revenue, they've made $15 billion worth of promises to, and it actually cost the country money. This is how incompetent these people are. They've put a tax on the Australian taxpayer uh, which actually costs the taxpayer. It doesn't take any revenue. I mean, a how hopeless response, can you Kelvin get? Thompson? The, 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 the government is acting on legal advice. If we were to act so in the teeth of Gillard legal advice, the, op the opposition... The opposition would be Why the did first Julie people Gillard out of the block criticising us. The proper, the proper thing for the government to do is to act on the legal advice that it's received. So why did Julie okay, Gillard well, write to Speaking of confidentiality, Browning? I want to get through a, a, another issue, Jamie Briggs, one that's very close to your heart. You've scored a bit of a victory in that crusade to try to get the Greens policies costed because the Information Commissioner has requested copies of the documents that the government claims were confidential because they're from Cabinet. How hopeful are you that this will lead to a full release of the Greens policies? Well, look, I think this is, this is another example of a Labor Party uh, who are doing uh, secret deals with the Greens behind uh, closed doors. Uh, they signed an agreement with the Greens after the last election as part of their uh, way to get back into power, uh, which gave the Greens the ability to request costings from the Treasury. Uh, the Greens have sought costings on what seems to be about 14 occasions, uh, and yet on eight of those occasions, the Treasury or the Labor Party is, is claiming that this information uh, went to uh, Cabinet and therefore can't be released. Now, it seems, of course, absurd and has since that uh, original uh, advice was, was given back mid last year that. How possibly could it be that a Greens costings request could be uh, going to Cabinet? Unless, of course, it is that the Greens are writing the Labor Party policies. Now, we know before the last election, the Greens announced that they wanted a carbon tax. The Labor Party said there wouldn't be one. Immediately after the election, they implemented one. Uh, we think it's only fair and reasonable that before this election, we actually get a reasonable idea about what the Labor Party might implement uh, if they are re-elected. We know that they are in bed with the Greens, they are in coalition with the Greens, uh, and it's about time the Australian people uh, knew what the little secret was uh, that the Labor Party is so desperately trying to hide. But Jamie Briggs, so many uh, coalition policies haven't been costed yet and certainly haven't uh, uh, been released if costings have been done. Well, indeed, we'll release uh, our full range of costings. We always do prior to an election. The Australian people know uh, our history. Our history is that we delivered nine surplus budgets during the Howard and Costello years. Uh, we've got an experienced team who'll do that again. Uh, the Australian people know when they look at the coalition that we can manage the budget. We can manage the economy far better than the Labor Party. But why, uh, but why should the, the Greens release their know? policies and costings if, if the coalition hasn't? Well, because uh, we know before the last election, uh, the Greens promised to have a carbon tax and the government said there wouldn't be one. Uh, it's only reasonable that if the government is claiming that costings, uh, costing requests that the Greens have made are somehow cabinet documents, in other words, have been considered by the executive of the government for implementation of policy, uh, actual government policies, then we should know what they are. Uh, why Calvin is the Thompson government trying to hide green policies? Calvin Thompson, why would Greens policies be subject to this cabinet secrecy? Well, well I'm not uh, familiar with the documents that have gone to cabinet and haven't gone to cabinet, but there's nothing secret between the about the agreement between the government and the Greens. That's a, uh, a publicly available document. Uh, what we do have here is an opposition which seeks to hide its policies and say we are going to release policies 
during the election campaign rather than give the Australian people the opportunity to properly scrutinise them. Joe Hockey claims that the opposition has developed many policies and yet these policies are not being made publicly available. They should be. OK, moving on, I want to ask you both about yesterday's news poll, which so showed a bit of a surge, uh, quite a significant surge, you'd have to say, to Labor's primary vote. Certainly puts Labor within striking distance of the coalition. Uh, Jamie Briggs, uh, why is this the case? Oh, well, look, it's a, it's a, a poll at the beginning of the year. I, I, I saw last night on uh, television news services around the country a couple of cabinet ministers, uh, Mark Butler in particular, getting himself very excited uh, about one poll. And that's an interesting approach from a cabinet minister. Usually, uh, uh, you know, politicians are, are wise to be careful and uh, to, to look carefully through. But, but what a does the coalition need trends? to do differently to stop Labor from creeping up? Well, look, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I think what the poll says is that this year Australians have got a choice. They've got a choice between a Prime Minister who fi finds it nearly impossible to keep her promises, whether it be on rolling Kevin Rudd, uh, whether it be on a carbon tax, whether it be on monthly reports on a mining tax, uh, or whether it be on a surplus, and a coalition which has got the experience to implement strong uh, policies to ensure Australia's prosperity into the future. That's the choice the Australian people have got this year. It'll be a tough fight. We don't take anything for granted, uh, but we're not sitting there equally, poll by poll, getting ourselves worked up with excitement uh, because of a slight improvement. Kelvin Thompson, what do you make of the poll yesterday? Uh David, it's not just a one-off. If you look at the news polls, four of the last five news polls, that is to say all the news polls for the last three months, four of the last five show Labor with either 49% or 50% on a two-party preferred basis. That is an eminently winnable position. If we win the campaign, we will win the election. And I believe this polling is showing that Tony Abbott has run out of puff and that Julia uh, Gillard has his uh, Julia go. Gillard has his measure. She is leading him substantially in the preferred Prime Minister stakes. Go. And we the fact that, that the opposition the, the fact that the opposition today. Jamie Briggs will uh, just let him finish. That, the fact that the opposition <laughs> spent the last week in question time talking about AW history from over a decade ago shows that they are out of touch with ordinary Australians. No ordinary Australians asked me about that issue over the course of the last month. They completely wasted that last week in Parliament and Tony Abbott appears to have no plan B. His plan A was to blow up the Parliament and secure an early election. That isn't going to happen and he manifestly has no plan B. Jamie Briggs, something to say? Oh, well, look, look that, that went out in the Labor Party talking points yesterday. We know that because the Australian printed them this morning. Uh, you know, blame Tony Abbott for everything. I mean, this is the campaign we'll see this year. Uh, we know Julia Gillard was happy to divide the Labor Party to get the Prime Ministership, and this year she'll try and divide the country to, to hold on to it. Uh, that is the Labor Party tactic. That's all they've got left. They can't go on trust because no one trusts them. Why would they? Uh, they can't go on their record. No one can, can trust their record. Uh, so they have to play the politics of personal destruction about Tony Abbott. So you're going to hear this day in, day out on this program, David, sadly. Uh OK, gentlemen, we'll stay with us. We're going to speak to Jim Wallace up after this break and then I want to get your comments on what he's said in regards to these anti-discrimination laws to which the church seems to have been in some ways exempt. <laughs> 